Chapter 7 Opportunities and Conditions Sutra The Master obtained the Dharma at Huang Mei and returned to Tao Ho village in Shaochou where no one knew him. But Liu Chu Liao, a scholar, received him with great courtesy. Chi Liao's aunt, Bishu Ni Wu Jin Tang, constantly recited the Maha Bari Nibbana Sutra. When the master heard it, he instantly grasped its wonderful principle and explained it to her. The bishop Ni then held out a scroll and asked out about some characters. The master said, I cannot read. Please ask about the meaning. If you cannot even read, how can you understand the meaning? asked the bishop Ni. The master replied, the subtle meaning of all Buddhas is not based on language. The Vishuni was startled and she announced to all the elders and virtuous ones in the village, here is a gentleman who possesses the way. We should ask him to stay and receive our offerings. Tao Shu Liang, great-grandson of the Marquis Wu of the Wei dynasty, came rushing to pay homage along with the people of the village. At that time, the pure dwellings of the ancient Paolin temple, which had been destroyed by war and fire at the end of the Sui dynasty, were rebuilt on their old foundation. The master was invited to stay and soon the temple became a revered place. He dwelt there a little over nine months when he was once again pursued by evil men. The master hid in the mountain in the front of the temple and when they set fire to the brush and trees, he escaped by crawling into a rock to hide. The rock still bears the imprints of the master's knees and of his robe where he sat in lotus posture. Because of this, it is called the Rock of Refuge. Remembering the fifth Vajra's instructions to stop at Huai and hide at Hui, he went to conceal himself in those two cities. Commentary After receiving the Might Seal Dharma from the fifth Vajra, Hong Chen, the sixth Vajra returned to Shaochou. He thereupon went to Taohou village. The present day Shao Quan in Chu Chiang district. When he arrived in the vicinity of Nanhua Temple, which before had been Paolin Temple, no one knew that he was the one who held the robe and bow. Liu Chi Yao was a wealthy retired official who enjoyed studying the Buddha Dharma. He welcomed the master reverently and made offerings to him. Chu Liao and his aunt Bishuni Wu Chi Chang, the Midwest Treasury, were the Sikh Bajra's great Dharma protectors. Wu Chi Chang liked to recite the Mahaparinibbana Sutra. This sutra in ten volumes was spoken by the Buddha just before he went to Nirvana. Hearing, hearing the recitation, the Sikh Patriarch understood the subtle principle and explained it to the Bishuni. Probably she couldn't read very well because she asked the master, what is this word? Do you mean you can't read it? said the master. No, I can't. She said, well, I can't either, said the master. But if you ask about the meaning, I can explain it for you. If you can't even read it, how can you know what it means? She asked. The master said, the Buddha's heart, the mind drama, the wonderful principle of sudden enlightenment has nothing to do with words. Instead, it points directly to the mind so that we can see our own nature and become Buddhas. Since it is not based on language, it doesn't matter whether you can read. Vishuni Wu Chin Chang thought that was very strange indeed. She told everyone in the village, here is a gentleman who has the way. He is a virtuous Dharma master. He may not be able to read, but he is enlightened. So we should make offerings to him. Although she didn't know a lot about characters, 
Wu Qingzang was nevertheless an incredible bishuni. She ate only one meal a day and never lay down to sleep because she knew that the fourth patriarch recommended these practices. Although her family was wealthy, she kept the precept of never holding money. She studied and recited sutras industriously, and when the time came, she died sitting up in meditation. Many days, many years have passed, and her body still has not decayed. Because she was vigorous and worked hard, a cultivation and had no sexual desire, her flesh transformed into indestructible vara. I saw the body in the temple in Chu Chiang. It is truly awesome. Among the villagers who paid homage to the great master was the great grandson of Marquis Wu. Marquis Wu was very intelligent. He was in fact a clever, as clever as a fox. He was genius, but he had a tendency to be jealous. Bishuni Wu Chang promoted the sixth patriarch. Do you know who he is? He would, she would say, he is the rightful successor of the fifth patriarch. He holds the robe and bow. One follower, one flower may be beautiful, but it looks much better surrounded by greenery. If no one had protected him, the sixth patriarch would surely have been murdered by Shen Tzu's gang or those of other religions. His drama assembly flourished because his disciples and lay pupils such as Bishu Ni Wu Qin Zhang and her nephew Liu Chu Liao, the scholar, guarded and protected him. Binaya Master Tung Ying also brought several hundred of his students to study with the master, and each student told his friends to come. So every day for lunch, there were between 1,500 and 2,000 people, seven or 800 of whom were members of the Sangha. Every day made heartfelt offerings to help rebuild Nanhua Temple. Some gave 10,000 ounces of silver, and some gave a million. They asked the master to leave there, and before long, it was a great body monitor big enough for several thousand people. A little over nine months later, several hundred of Shen Xiu's men left Huang Mei, passing through the Taoyu mountain range on their way to Nanhua Temple. They traveled for over two months. If they hadn't been intent on killing the master and stealing the rope and bow, they would have given up after a couple of days. Think it over, 16 or 17 years had passed since the transmission and the master had only been staying at Nanhua for nine months when the evil man returned. It's not easy to be a patriarch unless you are a phony. Real patriarchs live in great danger. The sixth patriarch had spiritual powers and he knew that not just one or two, but several hundred men were after him. He hid in the rock of refuge, which is just big enough to hold one person sitting in meditation. The evil man mingled in with the large crowd and stealthily set fire to the mountain. They burned off the entire area but never found the master. While hiding, the master probably meditated with great intensity because the texture of his robe and the marks of his knees can still be seen imprinted in the rock. When I was at Nanhua Temple, I sat in the rock for a time, but I wasn't seeking refuge, I was just trying it out. When you sit inside it, no one can see you. Sutra When Bishu Fa Hai of Chu Chiang City in Shaochou first called on the patriarch, he asked, Will you please instruct me on the sentence, Mind is Buddha? The master said, When one's preceding thoughts are not produced, this is mind, and when one's subsequent thoughts are not extinguished, this is Buddha. The setting up of masses' mind and separation from them is Buddha. 
Were I to explain it fully, I would not finish before the end of the present age. Listen to my verse. When the mind is called wisdom, then the Buddha is called concentration. When concentration and wisdom are equal, the, the intellect is pure. Understanding this Dharma teaching by practicing within your own nature, the function is basically unproduced. It is right to cultivate both. At these words, Far High was greatly enlightened and spoke a verse in praise. This mind is basically Buddha. By not understanding, I disgrace myself. I know the cause of concentration and wisdom it is to cultivate both and separate myself from all things. Commentary Bishu Fa Hai were also called Wen Yun, compiled and edited the Platform Sutra from the Sixth Bachelor's Lectures. Although I dare not say that he liked to be first when he wrote this chapter, he certainly thought I am the Master's number one great disciple and consequently wrote about himself first. Great Master said Fa Hai, I don't understand the sentence, this mind is Buddha, please explain it. Do not produce the former thought, said the Master, and just that is mind. Do not extinguish the later thought and just that is Buddha. With neither production nor extinction, the mind itself is Buddha. All appearances are set up by the mind, and if you can set up all appearances and be separate from them, that is Buddha. The mind is called wisdom, and the Buddha is called concentration. When concentration is wisdom and wisdom are equal, the mind is Buddha, and Buddha is the mind. They are one substance. When thought is pure, then wisdom and concentration, mind and Buddha, are equal. If you understand the sudden teaching, you know that the Buddha is not separate from the mind and the mind is not separated from the Buddha. Concentration is not separated from wisdom, and wisdom is not separated from concentration. If you don't understand because you, you don't understand because you have accumulated bad habits for many ages, the wonderful function of the self-nature is basically unproduced and undestroyed. So when you cultivate the mind, you cultivate the Buddha. When you cultivate the Buddha, you cultivate the mind. The same applies to concentration and wisdom. You should cultivate them equally. When you don't understand, there are two, mind and Buddha. When you understand, you know that they are originally one. In cultivating concentration and wisdom, you should separate yourself from all marks. Sutra Bishu Fa Ka of Hung Cho left home at age seven and constantly recited the Dhamma Flower Sutra. But when he came to bow before the patriarch, his head did not touch the ground. The master scolded him, saying, If you do not touch the ground, isn't it better not to bow? There must be something on your mind. What do you practice? I have recited the Dharma Flower Sutra over 3,000 times, he replied. The master said, I don't care if you have recited it 10,000 times. If you understood the sutra's meaning, you would not be so overbearing and you could walk along with me. You have failed in your work and do not even recognize your error. Listen to my verse. As bowing is basically to cut off arrogance, why don't you touch your head to the ground? When you possess a self, offenses arise, but forgetting merit brings supreme blessings. The master asked further, what is your name? Fata, he replied. The master said, your name means Dharma penetration, but what Dharma have you penetrated? He then spoke of us, your name means Dharma penetration, and you earnestly recite without pause to rest. Recitation is mere sound, but one who understands his mind is called a Bodhisattva. Now because of your karmic conditions, I will explain it to you. Believe only that the Buddha is without words, and the lotus blossom 
will bloom from your mouth. Commentary Dharma Masters for high Dharma see and for Tao Dharma penetration both received the sixth Vajrayasa Dharma. Far Tao left home at age seven and constantly recited the Lotus Sutra. But when he met the Vajrayak, he didn't bow properly. He just pretended he had to make some sort of show of it since everybody knew that the great master held Huang Mei's rope and bow. But the most respect he could muster was to throw himself hastily on the ground without even touching his head to the floor and his heart and in his heart he felt that his own merit certainly was greater than the master's. After all, he thought, I've recited the sutra over three thousand times. When Fata saw ordinary pupil, he couldn't even manage a half bow. He was like a rich snob who only sees other rich snobs and looks down on everyone else. The sixth patriarch took one look and knew that Fata had something on his mind. The Lotus Sutra is seven volumes long and reciting quickly, he could read through it once in a day or 365 times a year. Therefore, Fata had been reciting it for over 10 years. I don't care if you recited it 10,000 times, said the master. If you really understood it, you wouldn't revel in your own merit and could study with me. Not everyone can study with a patriarch, you know. If you have obstructions and afflictions, he may not want you. Therefore, if you come to study here but break the rules, you are not welcome. In order to cultivate with me, you must offer up your conduct in accord with the teaching. So many recitations, said the master, and you still don't know how conceited you are. No doubt you think your merit is even greater than mine. Such a pride is an offense. But if you could forget your merit and consider your 3,000 recitations as no recitations, then your merit would be limitless and boundless. Speak up, Dharma penetration, the master continued. What Dharma have you penetrated? Father was speechless. Not bad, the master said. You work hard. However, your recitation is of no benefit because you don't understand what the sutra means. If you could only understand your mind and see your nature, you would be a Buddha. You have come all this way from Hong Chou because we have an affinity from circumstances in former lives. Now just believe that the Buddha is without words and the lotus blossom will bloom from your mouth. Believe the Buddha never said a thing and if you recite without understanding the principle, you are wasting your time. The Diamond Sutra says, one who sees me by form or seeks me in sound walks in the heaven path not seeing the, the Tathagata. The Buddha taught for 49 years in over 300 drama assemblies, but when he was about to enter Nirvana and his disciples asked him about the sutras, he said, I never said a word. Was he lying? The sixth patriarch also taught that the Buddha said nothing, and if you believe this, the lotus will bloom from your mouth. But how does one obtain such rare faith? The sutra's principles exist in the minds of people. They can be spoken by you. They can be spoken by me. Everyone has this wisdom and everyone can speak the sutras. The Buddha spoke the sutras for living beings and the sutras flow from the minds of living beings. Therefore, the Buddha spoke without speaking. This means that you should not be attached to drama or to emptiness. Nevertheless, you cannot say, I don't know any drama, I'm empty. To understand that the Buddha spoke and yet did not speak is the most difficult and yet the easiest thing one can do. Can you do it? If you can, the Buddha has not spoken. 
If you cannot, then the Buddha has said too much.